Hi, I'm Nicholas Lodge from Cake Flix TV, Green Tornado Live. And I'm Sydney Galpern from Cake Flix TV, Sydney Sweet Adventures. And we're super excited to bring to you this collaboration where we'll be showing you how to do a vintage lemon drop martini themed cake. Yes, so we are going to collaborate in this two-part uh, feature where we are going to be combining our skills. So first, Nicholas is going to have his episode. What are you yep. going to show? I'm going to show how to make like the lemons, the lemon blossoms, the foliage, um, how to make the lemon slices on the martini glass, and the little elements and things we have for the cake. I absolutely love that. And then I'm going to come on for my episode up next, where I'm going to be showing you how to make the isomalt martini glass, a blown isomalt lemon, and some other decorations, a really awesome coaster using a, some edible images as well. So it's going to be so excited. much fun. Yes. So, so welcome and join us. And cheers. Cheers. So while Sydney's off preparing her isomalt ready for the next episode, um, I'm going to be showing you the elements of this cake. So in this first part, I'm going to show you uh, how I made the lemon slice for the lemon uh, drop martini. Um, so you have downloadable on nicholaslodge.com. You'll have obviously several sheets of downloads which go through part one, part two, part three, part four. Okay. Um, also, you will need to uh, download, if you don't have one already, a size guide. Um, do this on cardstock and then you can just cut, uh, use a hole punch, cut around the holes and you will have basically a size guide. And many of you have obviously seen me use this before uh, because we're going to be using a size guide to measure. Now for making the um, martini glass, uh, for the isomalt martini glass that Sydney's going to be showing in her episode, um, I need to make a lemon slice to go on the top of the glass. This is obviously a real martini glass here, but basically this will sit on the edge of the martini glass like this. All right, so this will be sugar um, instead of real glassware, but I'm using this just to show you an idea. I'm going to use my Winter Spice. Now this is my uh, Nicholas Lodge collection by Katie Sue Design Winter Spice Mold. And this Winter Spice Mold has actually got uh, three elements on here. There is the, uh, we have the uh, Star Anise, all right, which obviously we think of around Christmas time, but this is really nice to use as sort of an, on a wreath or things. We have the Cinnamon Stick, and then we also have the Citrus Slice, which you can make in lemons, as I'm showing you in this episode, limes. Um, oranges, pink grapefruit, so there's lots of different citrus you can do with this. So this is a really fun uh, project to a product to use for different projects. And you can use this, for example, this is uh, shows a, a wedding cake here and I use the cinnamon sticks on a, a four inch, 10 centimeter topper uh, for a wedding cake to look like almost like a rustic container made with cinnamon sticks. There is actually a video YouTube you can watch on how I constructed that. But so the cinnamon stick is very useful, um, but I'm going to, in this episode, concentrate on using the citrus slice. Now in your instructions, it says using, uh, we're gonna use a number eight small of white modeling chocolate, natural marzipan or modified rolled fondant. So I'm using here today um, white modeling chocolate. You can also use natural marzipan. So this one is actually done, this lemon slice is done or lime slice is done with marzipan, just natural colored white marzipan. Um, and then you can also use like an ivory cream colored sugar paste or rolled fondant. But if you're using the sugar paste rolled fondant, you will need to uh, modify that as I'm gonna show you for the rind with a little bit of tylose added to it. Modeling chocolate or marzipan, you don't have to do anything to that. Now you're going to take just a little tiny bit of vegetable uh, shortening and fat. I'm just gonna rub that onto the central part of the mold. And I'm just gonna take my, ham put this out a little bit like a little hamburger um, this is the number eight small, and I'm just going to press this to the edge of the mold. So it's going to press this because you want this to be nice and thin. Okay, so once this comes to the edge of the mold here, so you want to get that sort of nice natural look. You're going to take your little companion tool, which is part of my Flower Pro. Just make sure that the the edges that has this just this nice natural look to it. So you're almost just sort of going in with where the scallops are on the mold. So you see how you're gonna get this sort of irregular edge onto here. Now then we're going to take, once we've done that, uh, next step is we're going to take a number seven small ball of yellow, lime, orange, pink, peach, modified fondant. So this is gonna be a number seven small. So this wants to be a number seven that goes through the hole. And we're going to modify that. Now in my, obviously, um, my episode of me doing the rolled fondant. So in episode six, which is my last episode of Green Tornado Live, I showed how to modify obviously a larger amount. Here, all I'm gonna do is just take my little container of Tylos, 
and I'm going to just literally just put the little number seven ball of paste into there until it just tightens it up. So this is another way you can modify when you need just a little tiny bit of paste. And of course, if you wanted to modify it to be, I've really put quite a bit, like two little dunks in there. So this would become almost a little bit like a flour paste, gum paste consistency, okay? And then we're going to roll this into a sausage. Just gonna roll this onto sausage here. And then once we've done that, we're gonna roll this into about a five inch sausage. And you can use the same technique I showed you for the rope uh, where you use like just a bamboo skewer, but here it doesn't have to be so perfect. So, because we're not using it in, a, in the mold per se. But this wants to be about five inches um, here, it's about 12 and a half centimeters in length, okay? And then all you're gonna do is gonna just take this little sausage of paste and we're just gonna go around and as you put it into the mold, as you come around, you almost like just stretching it and make sure you stay within the perimeter of the mold. So you see how I'm just coming around here, like so. I'm just gonna come around and if you've got a little bit of extra, you can just pinch that off or use a pair of scissors. Now, when we do um, the citrus slices, if you're gonna use these on a cake, you only need to worry about one side of the mold, okay? Because we're going to actually, these will sort of almost like stand up on the glass. I want the sort of the texture from the mold on both sides. So what I'm gonna do here is uh, we're gonna then remove from the mold by peeling back and then turn over and press back into the mold and then release, okay? So what we're gonna do here, we're gonna just take this out of the, the mold here. So see this will come out of the mold. And then what I'm actually gonna do here is I'm just gonna put this back into the mold so we're almost just gonna squash this back into the mold, like so, and then this is gonna form the back. Now, when you press, of course, when we press on this, we're gonna lose this a little bit, but I'm using a cosmetic sponge. We're just gonna just press this on, so this is gonna give you, will give you the, you'll get the vein in on both sides, you see? So then we're gonna peel this off. So obviously the side you now take out, this will end up being the, the front of the lemon slice, okay? Um, and that's how you do the lemon slice. Now, once we've done that, we're going to, to fit onto the martini glass, we're gonna cut a um, little strip. So I'm actually gonna use my size guide, uh, my um, companion tool, which is going to give me about a four millimeter strip. So you're just gonna cut that to about four millimeters. Okay, and then just remove that piece here. And then you're gonna just check that sort of size-wise onto your martini glass. Now, Sydney's gonna be making the martini glass in sugar, so we just need to make sure that that's gonna sort of sit on the top. But so if you already had your martini glass sugar one made, you can of course just check this. Because this is modeling chocolate, if it was a little bit, we can also, even once it's dry, you can still make it a little bit bigger if you need to. Now then, this is going to be dried, all right? So you need to dry this. Uh, this needs to dry uh, in a food dehydrator um, or just at uh, room temperature for you know, a day or so. Because the modeling chocolate will also get sort of, because it's really thin, it will get actually quite hard, right? Almost like a fondant. Um, but because we've modified the rim, that is giving you the shape. Now, when I do the decoration on the cake, which I'll be showing you that in the fourth part of this, I'm going to also make a smaller lemon slice, which is in your directions uh, for part four. So what you do there is you just press the paste into the same mold, all right? So you just press the paste into the mold. You don't have to come all the way to the edge. And then what I'm gonna do there is I'm going to cut this with a uh, cutter. So in your directions here, it says you're going to um, make the lemon slice, you're gonna cut off um, with a one, one and a half quarter inch, a 30 millimeter cookie cutter. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually going to cut this out with a 30 millimeter, one and a quarter inch uh, cutter. So then I'm gonna put just a little bit of piping gel around the edge, just, just do it in little dots, because this one um, is not obviously squashed in a mold. And then I've just got a number six small following your directions. I've rolled this into a 10 centimeter, four inch little strip here and kind of come around. It doesn't matter if it doesn't go all the way around because it's going to actually be cut. And then I'm going to actually take my martini. This is a martini cookie cutter I'm gonna use for the topper of the cake. And uh, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna use the martini cutter to cut out this little slice because this is actually gonna sit on the edge of the glass, okay? So these would be uh, both obviously uh, done in the same way. And so you'd put these to dry. And as I said, like fun foam is really good. You buy in the craft store, so just use some fun foam here. 
and just let these dry, okay? Now once those have dried, we're gonna move on to the painting of those. And so when we paint, so first of all, um, on the painting, so coming back to your first page here, which says once dry, dust a little, uh, raised areas, a little cream cappuccino color. So this is a color called cappuccino, which is a, a cream colored dust. And uh, so what I'm gonna do here, I'm just gonna pop this onto a piece of parchment paper or wax paper. And I'm gonna use just a little bit of a cappuccino dust. You can use like a sort of creamy color, or you can take just like a little bit of light brown as well. You could also do like a light brown like this, and even a combination of both. And I'm gonna just dust the middle part, and I'm just gonna just sort of just dust that onto the, like the little ribs. So just where the slightly raised ribs are. I'm gonna put just a little bit of that creamy color. So just sort of rub that over the surface. So you see how you've just, you only need to worry about doing this on the sort of the front side, but we've just got, when you look at the back of this, you've also got the natural uh, vein in here as well. Now then we take some yellow gel color. And I'm gonna use some and of course, if you don't have pre-colored uh, sugar paste or fondant, I use the Renshaw yellow or the bright green for the uh, rind of the lemon. But if you don't have that, of course, you could color some white sugar paste rolled fondant with some yellow uh, Pro Gel. So I'm gonna put just a little bit of Pro Gel here. And then, now we take some vodka. And I'm going to use a little bit of vodka here. I'm just gonna just paint so I'm just gonna paint in the inside parts of these. Now when you're painting on marzipan and modeling chocolate, because it's oil obviously based, it's going to be, you can, but it will still paint fine with the gel colors. Okay, so you're gonna paint in the, and then you will then continue sort of finishing that off. And then what I've done here is I'm gonna just use some Harrison's yellow, which is more of a golden yellow color. And I'm just gonna just add a little bit of vodka to that and then you just will paint around the edge of this well this will give you like almost like a slightly darker color okay so you're gonna get this darker darker lemon yellow color here okay and uh, you can see here this is the finished uh, the finished slice and so you're going to then do the sort of paint on the other side as well okay and that will be how you would do the how we would do the actual lemon slice now when you're um, once they're dry course you're just going to have those ready to go and then um, you can also when you're doing the dusting uh, you can also dust the slices this one for example is just obviously dusted with lemon yellow and then I use the Harrison's yellow on the edge it's not going to give you such a sort of a strong depth of color and in your instructions it also talks about when you make the citrus slice you can also use a number nine small okay and you can just do the whole mold with the modeling chocolate the marzipan or the um, obviously modified fondant and then you can actually paint this so here you can see obviously an orange here I've got a lime partly done lime slice so you see how you can just paint this all in now this is obviously more realistic okay but the thing is is if you're using these especially for decorations um, on for example uh, things like cupcakes on lemon bars you see these can you can actually cut these then into like halves this is a marzipan one, you can do them into quarters, okay? And then you can use those to decorate. So for example, like, you know, if you're doing a lemon bar, you see there, I didn't do any painting, I've just done it with, and it looks just a little bit like a fresh slice of lemon. Um, so that's a sort of, just for, for little confections and things, a quick way. And then fun things you can do with these would be like for cupcakes. Um, this, for example, here, this is a gin and tonic cupcake, all right? Uh, this would be like an orange dream school cupcake. Obviously, you could do lemon drop martini cupcakes. And this is actually a margarita cupcake. So this has actually got a mascarpone cream cheese uh, buttercream with, uh, obviously, tequila in here. And then I've got margarita mix. And you can find recipes online for, like, gin and tonic cupcakes. Um, a really fun way of uh, doing the rind on here or the grated uh, zest is actually just to take a, I have to show you this. So if you just take some of your um, colored sugar paste, all right, this is some lime I've got here. And what I would also normally do is you can also, if you're gonna use these lice slices um, on, for example, cupcakes or things, you can actually add some lemon oil or lime oil to your marzipan, your modeling chocolate or your fondant. So it will actually give it flavor. And uh, so what I've done here, this is just some uh, green uh, sugar paste, rolled fondant. I've added some lime oil to this. You just let it dry for a couple of days. 
And then literally when you're doing a cupcake, you can take the little cupcake like this. So you can just pop this onto, and then I just take a little grater and you can actually just use like grated sugar paste onto there. And you see how it will actually look like lime, uh, lime zest. Uh, to use fresh limes, obviously it dries out very quickly. So this is just lime flavored sugar paste or modeling chocolate, and it will give you a really nice zest onto your little cupcakes. All right, so, but anyway, so that's um, going to be our uh, lemon slice. And the small lemon slice will be painted in the same way. You'll see that finished in obviously part four. Um, and uh, so that's how we make the lemon slices. I'll be right back after this short break. Welcome back. For making the lemon, we will need to make a large size rose cone. Um, so I'm going to use my cone and thorn mold. This has got three cavities. I'm using the large cone, which is 28 millimeters. Now in your directions here, it says you're going to take an 18 gauge wire. This is half length. Okay. And uh, we're going to make uh, use half width light green floral tape, 10 times H times 20. So that is just like I showed in some of my uh, other videos where we make a floral tape bud. Just gonna stretch your tape, it's gonna go around. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then once you've gone ten times around, you're gonna take your pair of pliers, you're gonna hook this. So the H stands for hook, and then 20 times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. And just gonna come down the wire. Okay? And then once we've done that going to then insert into a number 13 small ball of white or colored gum paste. So this is uh, white gum paste, okay? Um, you could also use the modified uh, sugar paste or fondant to be comparable to gum paste like I showed in my last lesson, okay? So it's number 13 small, but something that's gonna dry quickly, so a gum paste, a flour paste. Now it also talks about in your instructions, an alternative for using a gum paste cone is also to use a 28 millimeter styrene cone. All right, so you make a hole in the bottom of this and just hot glue the 18 gauge wire in here. This is great if you don't have uh, time to let the cone dry because this has to be totally dry. And alternatively, you can also use a number 13 small of Crayola Model Magic. That's a product you can buy for kids craft and basically it's like a foam tied, like a little bit like an air drying clay and uh, you can use that to make lightweight cones, but also that will be, you'll be able to work in with that in a few minutes. So it's gonna take just a little bit of vegetable shortening like we would normally do when we make flowers. Just gonna make that into a ball here. But you could also use, because you're not gonna see this, if you had say like some pale pink paste left from a project, you could pretty much use uh, whatever you had there because you're not going to see this, so it doesn't have to necessarily be white. A little bit of egg white is going to be brushed onto the floral tape bud here. I'm going to insert this into the ball of paste. Just going to mold this around the bottom. As I said, this styrene cone, of course, you can hot glue that on and pretty much work on that straight away, whereas this needs to dry for a couple of hours in a food dehydrator or at room temperature. I probably would generally leave this overnight. And all I do here is I just rotate this into my cone mold. So you're just gonna rotate it in the cone mold like this. And this will just give you perfect shaped cone. So you just rotate that. And then you're just gonna just take the excess paste off. So any excess paste there, you're just gonna just take that off with your finger. Make sure that that's pushed on. 
So you can just re just reshape that into there. But it just gives you uh, consistent size cones each time you make roses, okay? And then you're just gonna leave this to dry. Now, once that's dry, you will add two more uh, wires to this, which I've already done. So you just take two more wires to this and you just add those to it and you're just gonna tape down. So this actually means we have a total of three wires, okay? Because it's quite a heavy fruit, especially made when you make a gum paste or paste cone. Now we're gonna move on to take 80 grams of yellow or chosen colored rolled fondant sugar paste. So I've already pre-measured this at 80 grams. So very similar to the way I showed in my last lesson, in lesson six, how to modify the fondant. But here I have 80 grams. And then what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna to add to this one quarter teaspoon of Tylos. So I'm gonna add a quarter teaspoon of Tylos. So this is pretty much gonna turn it into, into like gum paste or flour paste. But, and then about a quarter teaspoon of vegetable shortening or shortening or vegetable fat. But what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna combine this together, but then what I'm actually gonna do is I'm not gonna let it sit, I'm gonna use it straight away. Um, now, in my last lesson, in lesson six, when you use this to sort of, for example, for like tappets or whatever, you'd have to let it sit for about 15, 20 minutes to firm up. But here, we don't need to let this sit because we wanna put it into a mold. So we actually want it a little bit on the softer side. But what it means is once the lemon is actually made, having this tylose in, it's going to make it quicker for it to dry. So then I'm gonna just, just gonna give this a little knead. And I'm just gonna just make this into a ball shape. Okay, and then we're gonna make it into a sausage. So almost a bit like a sort of basic lemon shape, like this. And then I'm just gonna use my finger here. I'm just gonna go in with my finger. And I'm just going to just make a, almost like a cup here. And I'm going to brush the inside of that with a little bit of piping gel. So it's gonna take some piping gel or some corn syrup or some edible glue just gonna brush that all on the inside, okay? So it's gonna make the inside of this cavity sticky. Then once we've done that, we're gonna take your, so this is obviously dry cone. So this one was made a couple of days ago, so it's obviously you can see it's totally dry. So now what we're gonna do is gonna put the cone into here and then we're just gonna sort of close this up. Now you wanna make sure not to get any trapped air in there. So that is why you want to, as I said, just slowly do this so you get the air into there. Again, you can just use a little bit of corn flour as needed, corn starch. Just gonna make this into a basic shape. And then we're gonna use the Simi Cakes. Um, this is the 3D uh, lemon lime mold. And in Sydney's part of the um, obviously project, uh, Sydney's gonna show you how to actually blow a lemon, a nice malt lemon into the mold. So it's gonna be a bit like a sort of glass blowing technique but here I'm gonna actually use the, the mold here. So with the mold, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna form this into the basic shape of one half of the lemon. And you'll have this sort of extra part of the top, all right? And then what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to clip the mold together. And I'm gonna to push this together, it's just gonna hold this. Now when Sydney does this, she'll be using a tube or a band to hold this, but with the sugar one, you're just gonna do this, and I'm just gonna just push this down just a little bit, so I'm gonna get this little rim. So what this is gonna do is gonna give you the texture of the mold. Okay, I'm gonna just take the mold off. Now you can see how you're gonna get this, uh, like what's like called flashing, okay? So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna use my companion tool, and I'm just gonna just go around we don't want to use anything sort of like a knife or anything because it's too sharp. But I'm just going to use my companion tool and this will get rid of the flashing. So you see how I'm just going to use my tool here. Just going to flex the mold. This will come out of the mold like this. All right. And I'm just going to just use my, again, my companion tool. Just going to, just going to gently just roll where the seam is. Now I'm gonna just bring the excess paste now. Now when you're working with this, all right, you can put this onto a piece of foam, all right? You can also use a smaller piece of foam as well. So basically like a cosmetic sponge, you could use a piece of foam like this, just something so you're not gonna squash it. 
and I'm going to just sort of start to work the paste around. Now, on lemons, all right, so lemons, you know, you can have like the end like this. You know, some lemons are more round. This is just this obviously a generic shaped lemon. But as I said, you know, when you're building this up, when you do limes, you can cut that off. But what I'm going to do here, I'm just going to take this, just going to cauterize it. So see, I'm just building up the top of the, the lemon like this, okay? Now, on the seam, there are several things you can do use. This is, um, these are called texture, texture mats, all right? These are used, I use these a lot for when I'm doing um, things like, uh, actually like little toperies, like when I'm texturing grass, when I'm doing like little toperies for cookies or gingerbread houses, when I make uh, snowballs, for example. And so these little texture mats here, so these are great to use for all different type of texture. You're doing like a bobble hat, you can use it. For, you're just gonna use this, and you see how it's gonna make like a little, little instant snowball, you see? But uh, this, this works really well because you can use this just on the seam. And what you're just gonna just gently, what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna just gently go on where the seam is. It's really the only area you need to because the mold has got the texture from, so you're just gonna just gently go where the seam is with the, the little texture mat like this, all right? Now, other alternative things you could use. This is my calla lily from my calla lily mat. So when you use this, this is how I do that is I put a piece of plastic wrap um, onto cling film onto this. And this you can also use in the same sort of way. So you could just gently go on the edge. This is great also for like leather texture. When I'm doing a texture for like a book, you can use this with the plastic wrap. It works great for the leather texture, okay? And then the third item you can use is the Katie Sue Designs. This is a cross-stitch mat, which we use for cross-stitch on cookies. That also works really well for the lemons and limes as well. So you're just gonna use that just on that just onto that seam there as well. All right, so basically just ways you would disguise it. And um, so then once we've got that completed, we're going to then take your companion tool, right, with your companion tool, it says use needle tip of companion tool, then ball tool to create a cavity. So you see, you want to just sort of hold this. So in the end here, I'm gonna use, first of all, the needle tool end, and I'm just gonna just open that up with the needle tool end and then I'm gonna use the ball in to end. So I'm gonna just sort of open this out. So you get this almost like a nipple shape on the end here. And then I'm gonna take my umbrella tool. My umbrella tool is gonna to be pushed into that. So you're gonna get this slight star. And then you're just gonna just rock down. So where each of the lines are, you're just gonna rock down here. They don't all have to be exactly the same length, but you're gonna get this sort of classic so you get almost these like five segments on the end of this, okay? So you're just gonna get these like lines um, on the end of your, but see how I'm using the, I'm using the, the shaft of the tool there just to give me that sort of classic shape onto there, okay? And uh, so then what you do is you're gonna put this to dry, okay? So you can put this into like some crepe foam. So this is um, obviously dry one. Now, when I have um, got this done, I then actually hang this in my food dehydrator. So I just hung this in the food dehydrator. I just left it in there overnight because obviously there's a lot of paste there and I just left it overnight. Or you'd leave it probably like maybe one and a half, two days at ambient temperature just to completely dry before we move on to the next stage. So once the fruit is dry, we're going to dust, all right? And uh, so I'm going to use a color here called Harrison's Yellow, which is the golden yellow I used in the first part. Now, if you don't have this color, you could use like, for example, a lemon yellow and then just put a little bit of orange into it. And I'm gonna brush this all over. So once I've finished brushing that over, you can put your excess color back into the bag. You can also use like little paper plates and things for this. That's our sort of main color. I'm then gonna use a color called Autumn Gold. And this Autumn Gold color, I use this a lot on like fall leaves and things, autumn leaves. I'm just gonna use a little bit of this just to go over the top. So I'm really just using a couple of these colors. So this will just sort of bring out the texture in the lemon. 
Then I'm going to use a little bit of apple green. So with a little bit of apple green, I'm going to put a little bit of apple green. So I'm just brushing from source away from source here. And we'll just work some apple green. So use, I'm using an angle brush here, flat brush, just going to bring some apple green down here. And you can just do like little touch just here and there of the greeny color just to sort of give your lemon that natural, you know, because you have a little bit of green before they completely ripen. You see how I'm just going to put just very, very little color on my brush here. Then I'm going to take a little bit of brown. So just a little bit of chocolate brown. And I'm going to put this at the very tip of the lemon. Again, very, very little color in there. Just going to put just a little bit of brown just into that area here. And then I will take just a little bit of the brown with some vodka. And we'll use vodka because it evaporates more quickly. But you can also use, uh, you know, for example, paint diluter and other non alcoholic based products, okay? So then I'm going to just paint into there. Just going to just going to just sort of make sure you fill in that whole of that sort of inside part with the brown, but quite quite weak. All right, so just going to get that. And then you can also just just do just some like little literally just like just touch your brush, just sort of here and there, just with a little bit just to give you a little your lemon that nice natural look, but very very little color. Okay. So those will be how you would do the dusting colors. Put this out of the way. Next, we're going to steam the fruit. So we're going to steam the fruit. This is going to then set the color. So I'm going to take my steamer. And once fruit uh, is going to be dry, and then you're going to then uh, steam the fruit. This is going to set the color. So it's going to just steam this lightly. You see how it's going to bring out all the beautiful colors here. Don't put this down once you've steamed it. And then you want to use a spray lacquer. Again, remember we talked about this before, so do this on a protected surface. Just a light spray of lacquer over the surface of here. So this will bring your fruit here, like so. And then you can see how you've got your lemon. And this is the lime, so this is made in the same mold, okay, the lime here. And just the lime, I just didn't bring the top up. I almost like cut that off, all right? But you can see how you get the sort of the lovely lemon and lime. Obviously, you could use uh, this for either or. And uh, so that's how we make the lemons ready to be used on the lemon drop martini cake. I'll be right back after this short break. Hi, I'm Chef Nicholas Lodge, an internationally known and recognized pastry chef and master cake artist. My signature color is apple green, and I travel the globe extensively teaching cake and pastry professionals and judging at cake shows. This busy schedule earned me the nickname several years ago of the Green Tornado. I'm originally from England, but have called Atlanta, Georgia at home for the past three decades. And this is where my base of operation is located with my retail gallery, my online store fulfillment center, and my classroom, where I teach a variety of cake and pastry related classes, including the Renshaw Academy modules and host amazing instructors like CakeFlix TV star, Sydney Galpern. I have developed my own line of exclusive Nicholas Lodge branded products, as well as the Flower Pro line of silicone molds in collaboration with Katie Sue Designs, all of which are used around the world by fellow cake artists and pastry chefs. So join me on CakeFlix TV for the next episode of The Green Tornado Live. Sweet wishes. Welcome back. In this part, we're going to be making the actual blossoms and buds for the citrus. So when we do this, we're going to work from your part three instructions. So we're going to take a 24 gauge white wire. I'm going to use half width white floral tape, create a floral tape bud three times hook times three. So just remember, stretch your tape a little bit. You're going to go around. So one, two, three. You're going to fold that over. Then one, two, three. You can use pliers break off the white floral tape. So we're just making the tip of that white. And then we're going to continue down the wire with the green, because you just want the top part to be white. So you want to come at least about halfway down 
with your y, okay? And um, so then we're going to then take, once we've done that, gonna take a number five small ball of very pale lime green. So I just use like a sort of an electric green, a lime green color, and I want a number five small. So very, very pale green, like the color I would use for like green hydrangeas and flowers like that. I'm gonna just condition this. And we're gonna use the ultimate filler flower mold. So this is the same mold that I use for the hydrangeas. And uh, here we're gonna use the cavity. Um, we have the cavity with the five sections. This is what I used in my uh, episode three for the hydrangeas. But here, these have actually got like five segments and they're used for cherry blossom buds and different types of buds. And we're going to then roll into a sausage and press into the medium section. So this is the, this is the small, this is the medium, this is the large, this is the extra large. So basically we're gonna use this one here. So I'm gonna just take this piece of paste. You can put just a little corn starch, corn flour on there. And you're just gonna press this into the medium cavity. So it's gonna go into that medium cavity there. It's gonna overfill it a little bit, all right, because we need quite a long back on this. Then taking your companion tool, with your companion tool, we're gonna just push this in. So a little bit how I did the hydrangeas, press this in to impact it. And then we'll brush a little bit of egg white onto the floral tape bud. So a little bit of egg white onto there. And then we're gonna push this into the mold. I'm just gonna mold around the back with your fingers like this, okay? And you're gonna just flex the mold. This will come out, so you see how you're gonna get the five segments on the top. You just wanna make that into like a, almost like a sausage shape, okay? So it just wants to be like a sort of a sausage shape like that. And that will be um, about half an inch, about 12 millimeters long, okay? So it's about half an inch, about 12 millimeters in length. And that will be the first stage. Now you let that dry um, a little bit, okay? So you wanna let that dry a little bit. Once you've dried that, the next step is going to be to roll out some white paste number three. So I've already rolled out some white paste and what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut this out. So we're actually gonna cut a, um, this is a three quarter inch, 20 millimeter by 20 millimeter or three quarters inch by three quarters of an inch, all right? So about three quarters of an inch, about 20 millimeters square, okay? Now, of course, you could, if you're doing say three flowers, you could cut these all at the same time. And then we're gonna take your scissors here. So I'm gonna use my spring action scissors. And uh, then it says you're going to you cut fine fringe like comb about half the depth of the square. So you're just gonna use your scissors and you're gonna just gonna cut a little tiny fringe in on here. And then we just finish up the last one. So you see how you've got this sort of fringe on the edge of this. We're gonna pop that onto cosmetic sponge. And then I'm gonna brush a little bit of glue on the solid part. So you're gonna brush glue all over the solid part of this. You're gonna take your green part here. And then the green part, the top of that, the tip, wants to be just at the bottom of the fringe. All right, so you can see that the bottom of that green part is really at the bottom. And then you just roll this up. All right, and if you make this the right size, it will just come around to meet perfectly. And you're just gonna mold around the bottom. So you see how I'm just pinching with my fingers. Just gonna pinch around here like that. And then you're just gonna open this up to create the classic like little stamens you have on the blossoms here, okay? So you're just gonna open these out like this. And sometimes they might fuse together, so you just can re-cut re if you need to. But as I said, if you're just gonna cut this to create the fringe, to create the little um, flower uh, stamens, okay? That's gonna be the first step. Now then, once that, that has been completed, um, you're going to then let dry a little bit. So this one has dried for about 30 minutes. All right, so this one has dried for about 30 minutes. And then what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to take some confectioner's glaze. So I'm gonna use some confectioner's glaze and then I need some yellow pollen. Now this is uh, pre-colored uh, pollen. This is actually like semolina. Um, and so you can also, you know, just use semolina and then add some yellow. Uh, this is like the Harrison's yellow, a golden yellow color uh, to the semolina. But my company, my website, and also several other companies sell pre-made pollen. So what we're gonna do here, we're gonna just brush some confectioner's glaze. So I'm just gonna just brush that onto the tips. So just onto the tips, just gently, like this. 
and then we're just going to go into the pollen like that. So you see how you're going to get your pollen on your end. And if you get a little bit too much on one, you can just pop that off. But this will give you the pollen onto the citrus blossom. Okay. Now I grow a lot of citrus and uh, obviously it has a beautiful smell. And uh, of course all of the, they vary slightly and also color as well, which we'll talk about some varieties of white, some have like a pinky color on them. Now we're going to take a number eight small, press into the Stephanotis cavity on the ultimate filler flower. So this is what we use for Stephanotis, for Nicotiana. Um, you can use this for several different uh, flowers and calyxes. And uh, so we're going to just take a number. So this is a number eight small. So this is a number eight small. And you're going to just press this into the cavity. Now remember, you can, if you need to put a little, if you're having pieces a little sticky, you can just put a little bit of vegetable shortening onto there. And just going to press this into the cavities. So just sort of move it down with your finger. And then I'm going to finish this up with my cosmetic sponge. So I'm actually filling the, you see how I'm pulling the paste down to fill the tips, but then you'll have this almost like a nipple on the back part. So you see how you have this little bit like a volcano sort of shape on the back part there. Okay, so a little bit thicker here, like so. Just gonna just work this in, just make sure it comes all the way down to the tip like that. And then once we've done that, we're gonna remove and you're gonna press the Dresden tool into the center of each part. So you're gonna take this out, flex this over, just using your companion tool, just make sure you don't get any extra paste here. But you see how you're gonna get the basic shape. And then we're gonna use your Dresden tool. So I'm just gonna, with my Dresden tool, which is the wider part, I'm just gonna press this into the middle of each of the sections, because you want a slightly sort of deeper almost hollow in here than you would have into a, than you'd have into a Stephanotis, okay? And that's gonna give you the, this part here. You're gonna make a hole in the center. And then we're gonna take our dry one, and then we're gonna brush a little bit of egg white around the base of this. So a little bit of egg white is brushed around the base. And you're then gonna thread this down through the middle. And it's gonna come to sit. I'm just gonna bring this up like this. And this is why your center part would need to be dry because if not, you're gonna pull the whole thing off the wire. And you're just gonna just work the paste down. So you're just gonna stretch that paste down here, just like there, just to give you the little back part like that. And if needed to, you could hang this upside down, okay? Now, of course, you could use this as a little filler flower, so you don't necessarily need to have citrus with it. You can just use this as a filler flower. Now, when we move on to the buds, um, the buds would be done in exactly the same way, um, so three times hook times three, but I've used in 26 gauge wire, so just not quite as thick, all right? So this is 26, and then you're gonna take number five ball of paste and number six size balls of paste. So this is regular number five size. So this is gonna be a regular number five size, so that would actually um, sit in one third below two thirds above. Gonna make that into a little sausage. And then what we're gonna do here, we're gonna take the mold here. So we're going to use that. So this is going to be in the large one. So this remember is small, this is medium, this is large. So this is going to go into the large cavity. So again, it's going to overfill this, all right? And then you're going to just press that in because we want a slightly longer back than we would use for say cherry blossoms and things like that. A little bit of egg white onto there. I'm going to push this in. It's going to mold this around the So here we don't really have to flex the mold because we've pushed this into the mold just just and you see how this is going to, when you take this out, and again, this is going to give you this, and just going to taper this down to give you the shape of the bud, of the bud, you see? So you're just going to say, so it's slightly tapered, not so much of a sausage shape. And this one wants to be about 15 millimeters, all right, about 15 millimeters, which is about uh, five-eighths of an inch. And then you use a number six. So then the number six size, that would be made, which is on your directions, three quarters of an inch or 20 millimeters. So this is gonna be your number five and your number six. This one is made in the extra large size cavity. And that is how we make the buds. I'll be right back after this short break. Hi, I'm Chef Nicholas Lodge, an internationally known master cake artist and pastry chef, and also a global ambassador for Renshaw Americas, the Renshaw Academy, Renshaw and Rainbow Dust brands for the last five years. In 2016, I helped create and write the content for the Renshaw Academy modules that launched in 2017. 
Currently there are three modules covering royal icing, rolled fondant and sugar paste, and sugar flowers. Each module is three full days of class time. My base in Atlanta is where I teach the Renshaw Academy modules as separate three-day modules, then once a year as a nine-day master class, perfect for an international student to come and take all three modules at once and receive master certification. I've also taught the Renshaw modules all over the United States, Canada, as well as internationally. For more information, please see the class schedule at nicholaslodge.com, and I hope to see you in a Renshaw Academy class real soon. Welcome back. So once the flowers and buds are dry, I've taken a number six small of green. I've put a little bit of vegetable fat or shortening in the small in the daisy mold. And then I'm going to skim. So I've just pushed it in with my cosmetic sponge. Then I'm just going to just skim this across the top with my little scraper here. Now alternatively, you could just use a daisy cutter as well. This would be comparable to like a medium sized daisy cutter. Like if you have, say, like the FMM plastic set. But this just gives a nice shape. And then I'm just going to just take this out. And then with my, once we remove this from the mold, I'm going to cut off, actually going to cut off five petals. So you're going to cut off five petals like this. This one that's got three petals, we're going to need that for a second. And then what you do is you're going to cut, so you're going to cut each petal in half. You can just use regular scissors or spring action scissors here. And then you're going to cut down the middle. So what you'll end up is you end up with two and a half, like two and a half petals. But what's going to give you, going to give you five little tiny uh, fingers here. And this is sort of how we would make the little calyx. And you're just going to just turn this over. So when we do a lot of flowers that have a sort of fairly um, short back like this, we use this technique of using the, um, to wrap this around. So you're going to brush your egg white on the solid part and halfway down your fingers. And this is my dry one. You see this is just going to just wrap around the bottom of the flower like this. So this is going to give you this beautiful calyx on the bottom of your um, citrus blossom. Let me just open that out a little bit like that. You see, so they would just, so this is going to make a very nice calyx on the bottom. And you would do the same on the bud here. You see, you're just going to put this on. I'm just going to wrap this around so that the calyx will come around like almost like a little hand. This will just come around to, to sit like this. Okay. And then with the the three part one you have, so then again with that third part that you have from the five petals and then the three remaining petals, you're just going to cut two petals in half and then cut one just half of that. So that will give you the, the little, so you actually will get three calyxes out of one daisy. You see? So you actually get three calyxes out of one daisy. And that's how you would make the calyx. So we're going to dust super pearl, which is just a pearl dust over basically over the petals and over the buds. Don't try and do that on the middle because you probably will break it, okay? And you'll do the same on the buds as well, which I've already done, so just do pearl dust over the buds. Then we're gonna take, um, this is a pale uh, light apple green color. So I'm gonna put just a little bit of that just around the very sort of base of the flower, just in the middle here as well. So just in the center at the petal base, so just where the petal uh, base meets the center. Just a little bit of this real soft green color. And then also on the tips of the buds. So just on the tip of the bud as well, just a little tiny bit of that very, very pale green. Then we're gonna use this green here, which is called prairie green, which we're gonna just put that just the, on the inside of the calyx. Just kept, be careful because the calyx is quite fragile, okay? So you're gonna put a little bit of that green just into the very base of the calyxes. And then finally, we're going to use, this is uh, foliage green, which is a darker green, uh, which I used on my you know, fabulous foliage um, at the base of the calyx. And that's how you would do the coloring. And then these would just be steamed. So we're going to then just steam these. 
So once we've steamed them. Now, there are some varieties it talks about in your instructions. Uh, some varieties of uh, blossoms have pink color on them here. You can see like, uh, so here you can see the pink. So this is done with an Ondina rose, which is sort of an old rose color. And uh, so the, that's uh, some varieties are, have that pinky color on them. So you can see like on the bud, you have just like pink stripes down the centers. Some of the citrus blossoms are just white, okay? I'm just gonna do the, the white variety. And then you just will steam these. So just gonna steam them. And this will just give your flower this nice waxy look because you have the pearl dust onto it. And you can see how that's gonna give your, uh, this will give you your citrus blossoms. So you will need to um, look at letter episode five. This is fabulous foliage. So this is the blossom um, cutter leaves in lesson five. And as I said, you'll be able to watch this and then that's the leaves I've made for the citrus. Now the only difference is, is that I've used green floral tape for the base of the leaf. And then I've added a 22 gauge wire. And uh, if you watch my, actually my first um, episode on making the wisteria, I use this technique for the wisteria. And that is that you're going to use your brown half width floral tape. You attach the leaves where you want them to go. And then you go down and then you're gonna come up and you're gonna come down with your floral tape. So you're actually gonna do like three times with your floral tape. So you're making like more of a branch, okay? And then you're gonna texture this with your scissors. So you do this onto the leaves. I've also put the clusters of flowers together on a 22 gauge wire. And again, I went down, up, down, and textured this. And uh, so then we're going to put this together. And you're gonna just sort of take your lemon here. So the lemon is going to sit, as you will sit, see at the end of Sydney's episode, we're gonna put the lemon onto the cake board. So I'm gonna just sort of take my, um, my uh, actually lemon here, my leaves are gonna go to the side, and I'm gonna just take the, here, the lemon fruit, and then I'm going to add in my, my blossoms here. You see how this gonna just sort of sit, sit into here like so. And you're just gonna just take this together and just using your floral tape. So then we're going to then just come down, up and down. So you're just gonna do this to however long, long you want this to be. And then just at the point where the, the leaves meet the, the green meets the brown. So you can see here where the green, you wanna use some chocolate brown dust and you're going to then just dust some chocolate brown dust. And also just on the base of the leaves as well. So just where the sort of the flower meets the stem, where the leaves meet the stem. So you don't have this sort of a harsh transition from green to brown. So just put a little bit of brown onto there like so. And that is how we would uh, make the, the lemon leaves. So you have your lemon to go with your, with your fruit there. So just like the leaves, because these are the leaves I showed in the fabulous foliage. You can see that's all done in chocolate brown. So you want green, the green stem and then change it into brown to so transition into the brown. And that is how we would do the, uh, the lemon, uh, ready to go on to the lemon drop martini cake. So here are some of the other elements we have on the cake. This is all in your download. So I've rolled out white gum paste, cut out with the cookie cutter, and then obviously made the small lemon slice I talked about in the first part. This was painted with some rainbow dust, uh, pearlescent white mixed with a little bit of yellow to make the lemon drop martini. Um, I used piping gel on the top of this and sugar, um, like Sydney's gonna do on her isomol uh, martini glass, sugar crystals. Um, and uh, then the little small martini glass that is made with gum paste in the uh, fun drinks mold from um, Katie Sue Designs, the little martini glass here. And again, I painted this with the same sort of colors. And then the cocktail stirrer, I have a little tiny stirrer on the top of the cake and then a larger one we're gonna use in the martini glass. You'll see this with Sydney, I've done like an orange blossom. So that is just done in the, using the two sizes of forget-me-nots in my mold. And then I've just pushed a piece of spaghetti with a little bit of piping gel on the end of it in the back of the large one. And then angel hair pasta, which is obviously thinner on the small one. And they were just dusted with pearl dust, a little bit of yellow from a food art pen um, or gel and a little bit of green in the middle. Um, so it sort of carries through the citrus blossom theme. Uh, the cake has also got on it some pearls made with the pearl mold. So in my episode, um, obviously five, where I showed uh, techniques on rolled fondant, how I did the rope, this is the same way as we did the pearls. And um, 
you'll see the cake obviously finished uh, at the end of Sydney's episode. So I hope you've enjoyed this episode and I'm excited to show you at the end of Sydney's episode how we put this whole lemon drop martini theme together. So sweet wishes, see you soon, bye bye.